one. And we are officially live, my friend. Parker Pemberton, what is up, brother? Hey Mike, how's it going? It's going really well. It's going really well. I'm, I'm excited to uh, finally get an opportunity to have a, uh, a, a chance to, well, just a chance to talk to you. And, and I know you're going to drop some knowledge today, man, and, and certainly excited to dig in um, to you, uh, your story, uh, hearing a little bit more about your business and, and uh, hoping you can provide some value to the audience. Um, by the way, man, I love the name. Uh, I love the name for real estate, Parker Pemberton. Um, that's 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 a real estate name. Mike Wall uh, is not a real estate name. I, that's just <laughs> too terrible. Mike Wall, but Parker Pemberton, I love the name, man. Um, and super excited to have you drop some knowledge today. Why don't we start with this, brother? Um, tell everybody who maybe doesn't or isn't familiar with you. Tell a little bit about um, you know how you got into real estate, what you did before real estate, and and and, and all that stuff. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on, first of all. Um, awesome. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we can provide some great value uh, because that's how I've learned personally. But um, a little bit about me, sitting here today, just turned 33 years old. I got into the business uh, the day that I turned 30. So uh, it's been it's been a fast-paced, um, quick spurt for sure. But I've, I feel like I've been in the business my whole life. My father has been a very successful real estate agent. Um, and he's now in his 40th year in business. So growing up, I was a son of a realtor and, uh, I never thought I'd end up in the business, but, um, you know, looking back, I'm extremely grateful to be here. Him and I are partners. Uh, we run our team together. Uh, he's a huge influence to all of us, um, and a lot more people out there too. So, um, anytime I talk about the success or the, the you know, the, the good stuff that we've had, I want to make sure he gets credit too, because he's, he's huge. He's our rock. So. Um, grew up in Apple Valley, Minnesota, which is a suburb of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, basically from about five years, five years old forward, I've been, uh, into sports and very, very competitive in everything that I do. Um, I got a golf scholarship to go to the university of New Mexico where I played and finished college. Awesome. Played professionally. Yeah. I played professionally after that, uh, for four years, got injured, um, and decided to move back home. So from there I had no clue what I was going to do. Um, I was 25 and I started a lawn care and landscaping company that I ended up scaling up to about 500 residential accounts. It was great. Um, but there's a lot of things that I don't miss about it either. So yeah. I got into real estate really the second go around because my dad got sick and he had to have surgery, he had bladder cancer. And, um, you know, I said, I can't just let him you know, do that. I mean, this is a great opportunity for me. It's a, it's a great opportunity to keep his business going strong and, and help him and support him through that process. So, um, so I got in and it seems like it was just literally yesterday that we started growing this team, but you know, you keep your head down, you work hard and, and, and things, uh, they, they grow quickly. Absolutely, man. Wow. So there, there that, there's a ton actually to dig into there, but what most times what I think of when, um, people are telling their story uh, like before they got into real estate is um, just, just to kind of connect it to real estate is like some of those valuable lessons that maybe you learned um, being competitive in, in, in sports, um, you know, high school all the way through um, all through all through the professional ranks. Uh, and then with your landscaping business is, is maybe what are some of those lessons that you learned um, doing, doing, you know, um, playing golf at such a high level and, and then, and then going through everything you went through to get there. And, and then, um, and then also in that, uh, landscaping business that serve you today, even still in your business in real estate. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. I actually, I think about it all the time. Um, really what it comes down to is it's pursuing something. It's always having a big goal ahead of you that no matter what you're doing, you're always working towards a goal or you're working towards something bigger. And, you know, in golf, for instance, I, I went out there plenty of days. I would hit 18 greens. I would hit 18 fairways. I would shoot 67, which if you're a golfer, you know, that's not very good if you hit all fairways and greens. Um, but there's always something, you know, you could shoot 64 and the next day you're out there, you're like, you know, I should have made that eight footer. I should have done this. I should have done that. It's almost like it's the pursuit of perfection. Yeah. And yeah, and like, that's really what I can boil it down to. And even now it's like, I put a system in place or we hit a, a goal in our real estate team and it's like, all right, what's next? What are we going to do next? Where are we going? Um, you know, and, and I guess if you really boil it down, I've had a 
a, really, I, I feel like I'm just a result of having great mentors in my life, honestly, mm-hmm. starting with my dad. But throughout my golf career, I met several people along the way that um, were great financial role models who also happened to be unbelievable people, too. So I was able to see that you can accomplish this this life of greatness and you could still be a good person doing it. And it just takes hard work and it just takes perseverance because no matter, no matter what you do, you're going to have those hard ass days yeah. and you're going to have some really tough times. Um, but you got to push through those. And I think it's all of that coming together that, you know, that's where I sit right now. Yeah. What I'm, I'm curious, man, what did it mean to you um, just from a business perspective to have a resource your dad, you said as of this year, I think your dad's been in the business roughly 40 years. And what did it mean to you, though? And what kind of advantage do you think it gave you to have somebody like that to tap into every day? Oh, huge. Total game changer. And, you know, like I like I mentioned, opening this up, my all of my success is shared by him um, because he was so important and is so important in my life. Um, you know, I look at it like I got the greatest opportunity in the world. And if I don't fully take advantage of it, if I don't get up every day and work as hard as I do, that I'm just throwing that away. And that's probably my greatest fear would be letting that happen. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I have some really big whys. I have some really big goals. And um, there's no doubt I, you know, I have no chance of sitting, sitting here today um, with what we've done without, without him, for sure. Yeah. So let's 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 dive into like um, you know the, one of the things that I think that was I was so impressed uh, about you was the the quickness uh, or the speed in which you uh, scaled your business and you know so obviously you know one thing you can attribute to that is is being able to to have the um, experience that your dad's gained over the last forty years to tap into but you know there's more to it than that and obviously we know that. So when you decided to go all in on real estate, kind of walk me through that journey when you made that decision, hey, I'm going to get my real estate license. What were you thinking about? Were you thinking about, did you get get in right away and think, I'm, I'm going to be a rock star agent? Did you get in right away with the intention of building a team? Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, that's funny because it just made me think about how I felt doing that. Um, no, actually going into it, I had to sell one house a month to make what I made at my previous uh, job, you know, my business. And so I set my whole business plan according to how am I going to sell one house a month? And when you're not in there, you know, in the business, that's an intimidating process. Like, how can you wake up every day and go sell a house a month out of, you know, you got nothing. You're a 30 year old kid. Um, And so when I got into the office, my dad said, he said, call everybody you possibly know and make sure you follow up with everybody. And, And so what was funny about that is that he had a Zillow feed of uh, like 300 people that he actually didn't call. They just came into the system and they were sitting in the database. So I'm like, all right, these are people that were exactly like my lawn care clients who, you know, submitted an inquiry for some kind of a service. And now it's my job to reach back out to them, qualify them, service them at a high level. And then, you know, of course, get their reviews and, and get the repeat business from them. So, when I came in, I, that's what I started with an old list of Zillow leads and ended up selling, uh, I think I closed six transactions from that list in the first uh, 45 days. So I was literally out, yeah, like all day, every day, every single hour I was out showing houses, meeting people. And, um, and then it started to click with me. And then that's when I started building systems. But, you know, my dad was um, a perennial uh, President's Club member. I mean, I think he's he is one of the most outstanding real estate agents I know. So to have that resource, to have that rock, that if I have a question with the transaction, if I need with an amendment, you know, if I need anything, I could just call him and ask. And I definitely took advantage of that. Um, him and I sat in the office every single day together, too, which is very important. So um, he's more knowledgeable than any broker that I know. And that was a huge resource in the early goings. But I will tell you, Mike, I bought, I think I bought like three or four air conditioners from screwing up uh, because of how fast I was moving. But I just look at it like it's the cost of business at this point. We've all been there, man. We bought, I bought my share of refrigerators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm the type, I tell everyone, like, my dad is the type where if you have a closed door, he'll, he'll, 
find the, the most precise way to pick the lock and open it. And I'll come up to it and kick it down. Like that's just kind of how I am. He's the yin to your yang, right, man? Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this, um, because not everybody um, who will watch and listen to this has a, a dad who's been in the business with a ton of experience and who's just an outstanding agent to tap into. So to that person who does not have, um, you know, does not does not have their father or somebody else, you know, immediately related to them to tap into. What would you suggest that they do if if they're if they're just in there grinding and out on their own and they're and they're having they're having a struggle, you know, making it happen? Well, yeah, and how many people are out there in that situation? A ton, right? I right. think that uh, that's honestly why there's a seventy five percent turnover in year one because people come in, they want to be a real estate agent, but then they it's just so hard to make it on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you have to find role models you have to find people that you can watch and emulate every single day, copy every little thing that they do, and then put your own little twist on it. And that might be your broker, but in my opinion, it's better to go find a team leader out there who, um, who has the resources and who has the systems to, to really show you that. Because I know, I know agents that go and join teams and they don't get a, more than five minutes of their team leader's time too. Yeah. So somebody who you can sit next to every day, you go to the office, you learn from them, and then you copy them. And then you just go and put your own twist on it. Yeah, I love it, man. I, I love it. I just did a video about this yesterday because like, um, I, I've interviewed a couple people over the last um, three or four days here now. And um, I, I'm starting to realize that most people, they have a misconception uh, about a career in real estate. And, and so, because I think the reason why people most, most people get into this business, and I actually wrote this down yesterday, after I talked to this gal that came through, um, is that they like, here's my, I'm starting to hear red flags. If I hear I'm like, I'm a people person. I love working with people. Um, I love houses. Um, I love, uh, I love showing houses. I love, you know, I love writing contracts. I love negotiating contracts because that's what, that's what we see on TV, right? If you go to, if you watch like million dollar listing, or if you watch any of these residents or any of these real estate shows, you just see like, it looks like a great job, right? And, you, and then you get this huge commission check. And, and I call that the pretty or the good side of real estate. But what they don't understand is that that's only one half the job, right? So if you look at this piece of paper, I've got it, it's segmented into two separate jobs. And so the bad side or the ugly side is and we're all the we're all the meeting or the meeting with people and showing houses that the, the good side it comes from the ugly side. So the ugly side is making calls, lead generation, prospecting, door knocking, open houses, networking events. Right? It's all the time that it takes so that you can do the 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 the, the fun things, right? Which is show, if you like houses to show houses or whatever that is. Um, but are, are you finding that when you talk to agents that most of them are getting into real estate for maybe they, they had a misconception of how they thought real estate was supposed to be done. Yeah, totally. And, and I interview agents all the time as we ramp up our team. And um, yeah, you hear two things. You, you, you hear the things that you suggested, of course, but um, people, most of the time they want to be financially independent and they want to have control of their time. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is those two things don't go together in the beginning. It takes a lot of hard ass work to get to that point to be able to control your time and to be able to make a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it, it's not easy. And I think that that's what those TV shows portray is that it is easy. Um, and you can make a lot of money and you can have the, you know, the gravy too, but yeah. man, you and I both know like how many times have you missed dinner with your family in your career? You know, I mean, how many times have you had missed things like, and at the same point that at the same time, that's why people get into this business because I watched my dad take me to every single hockey game and every golf tournament every single time and still provide an unbelievable lifestyle. But keep in mind, that's 25 years in. It's not in yeah. year one to five, like in year one to five, you have to literally grind your ass off all the time and do whatever it takes. Otherwise you're not going to make it. Right. Right. So, um, and I always, that, that's funny that you said that because I always say the number one people, the number one reason people get into real estate is freedom and flexibility. And the number one, reason people get out of real estate is freedom and flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> so because well, you know they don't I, have the self discipline. Yeah. Well and that's why I think joining a team is is probably the best thing you can do out of the gate because you have somebody to coach you, to hold you accountable, to show you what it's like to make it in the business, 
potentially provide you some clients to work with, right? Um, yeah. Provide you at least the skills that you need to get going. And I, I mean, there's no doubt teams are the future. So back to your original question, no doubt if I had to start over, I'd go find the most successful person in the city and see if I could, you know, buy him coffee or dinner and see if I could just spend some time with that person. Yeah. I love it, man. So uh, I'm curious, man, how did you like, obviously you had a great role model in your father and, um, and, and sure he was, he had made a lot of the mistakes so he could help you avoid those. How did you avoid falling into that pitfall of, of, you know, of complacency of, of, because I mean, like, you know, you, I mean, there are people that get into this industry and, and, you know, you can make a good living as an agent on your own, right? You, you can go out and make, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year, right? And, and, and do everything. What, I'm, but I'm curious, what continued to drive you to, to build and to push? Um, yeah, I don't know how deep we can get with it, but, um, you know, to honestly, to make my dad proud was, was number one. Um, but number two is I knew that the opportunity was there and that, that, you know, I didn't make it in golf. I didn't make it technically in, in my, you know, previous business. And so I got a chance to start over and start fresh and do things that I learned from previous experiences and really be great at something. Um, because I don't accept anything but greatness. I mean, we could be playing um, you know, darts and I'd try to bury you, you know, and any, anything that we do, I'm going to try to win. But, um, that, that was really it. But the other thing is that I didn't really have a measure of what was good and what was bad. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just saw him doing his thing. And then I went and I copied people nationally. My new role models have turned into people who are basically me in 10 years. And I know, you know, by watching and, and emulating them, I'll eventually be there too. But I, I don't know if you feel this, but every day I wake up, I feel like my back's against the wall in this business. Like mm -hmm. it could all go away tomorrow. And I think that that's very motivating as well. Yeah. Well, essentially every day we wake up, we're unemployed, right? And so we have to go, we have to go find work when we get out of bed in, in this industry. So, yeah, so sure. talk about, talk about, um, you know, the, the, the whole, the title of this was, you know, how to scale 60 million over the next three years. So like, when I say that, um, you know, it's, it's uber impressive, man. And so talk about like wh when, when you say scale, um, you know, from being a solo agent, um, walk me through like what that, what that word means to you and your real estate business. What scale means? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I did just to preface this is that three months in, I hired a coach. Um, because I knew I wanted a different perspective than my dad's as well. Mm -hmm. I actually convinced him to jump in with me. So we have team plus coaching with Tom Ferry and, um, and they've been amazing. I love, I love their system, but, um, I gave up a little bit of money to learn how to create systems early on that have kind of catapulted me into a, a very fast track to scale, which is, um, growing your business successfully with a, you know, with a client base and as well as with some, some systems on the side that are internet based, yeah. um, to build your, to build your business. And when I came in, um, you know, Steve would, he, he would get up out of the morning, he would wake up, get out of bed and sell 20 million and any year, any generation, it doesn't matter perennial $20 million guy. But I looked at it and I said, we can do, we can do better. Like we can build something together. So let's use your strengths and my strengths and let's start putting this together. The first thing that we did was we had to get me uh, very successful because I believe you have to become a successful agent first before you should even consider building a team. And so when I came out of the gate at the end of the year, when we were eating dinner, celebrating the year, I had, I think, 100 sales uh, in, in that year in contract or closed in my first year. And going back to you know expectations, I didn't know what was good. I thought it was possible to sell 300 homes. I mean, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that selling, you know, 20 was exceptional as a first year agent. So um, we started building around that. So I, so I got so busy where I needed to automate or I needed to leverage a little bit on my side. Um, mm -hmm. And Steve was still doing his thing and I was just running too fast. So I had to really think about what is going to leverage my time uh, most at this point. And that was uh, somebody to help with paperwork. So a transaction coordinator. After that, it was 
how can I automate my follow-up processes so I can keep crushing Zillow and my other internet sources converting at a very high percentage rather than just hiring somebody else like a buyer's agent and saying, here's some leads, you know, go do what I did. Yep. So I, I put systems in place that would automate the follow-up and that would keep me in the conversation with people. So I kept closing those transactions. And soon enough, we had so many transactions that we needed to bring on more people. And that's when we started adding agents at that point. So today it's really interesting. There's so much good technology out there that I think you should really consider how you can automate and leverage your own time first before actually hiring somebody. Yes. Yeah, I agree. So, and, and just, I guess to continue with that, you know, it started with one person, but I kept doing the same things every single day, which were prospecting and following up. Like that's always been a staple in what we do. And that's what I hope that uh, my team members, you know, get out of us too, that like we're constantly prospecting, we're constantly reaching out to people. It's a contact game, right? Yeah. It's, and we are at the end of the day, uh, technically salespeople. I, I feel like it's more service, but you know, you don't eat unless you, unless you go and find the next, the next kill, I guess. Right. So, so yeah. um, talk about why you think, and, and, I, and I have my reasons as well, but talk about why you think it's important to scale yourself first with systems um, and, 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 and tools and resources. Why, why, do, why, why, in your opinion, do you think it's important to do that? Well, you have to build up some kind of a reserve fund. Like you, ha you can't just go out and, and spend all your money. Um, so you have to continue to keep selling so that you can devote a little bit of that money or that profit that you're making to something else in order to find a return there. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't take it to the next level because they feel like, well, no one can do it as good as me. Nobody mm -hmm. can, they, no one can answer my emails. No one can do my paperwork. Like you see it all the time. No one can show homes as, as well as I can. Um, mm -hmm. And it's totally true, you know? And so, so looking back, um, you, you have to leverage yourself. Like if you're an agent selling 40 homes, be honest with yourself. Like, are you at your absolute max right now? Yeah. Or can you add something like agent legend or structurally in to continue to build your lead funnel and mm -hmm. close more homes? Yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about like, so you were all in on Zillow right out of the gate and you knew that, okay, so if I, if I can create more time for myself, then I can create, um, more money, but the only create only way to create more time is to leverage some of these non-dollar productive tasks that I'm using. So I'm going to bring on a contract manager, right? And they're going to do my administrative work. Um, talk talk about like once you when you hired a contract manager uh, and you freed up some more of your time. Did you just double down on Zillow, or did you add in another component? Uh, or were you doing um, additional internet lead generation, or what did that look like? Yeah. Uh, well, every lead to me has always been the same. Like since day one, again, no one told me what a Zillow lead was or what a pay-per-click lead was. Like I just view every lead. If, if it comes in, it's a lead. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so it's my responsibility to figure out where that person is in their cycle. And so um, really what, what I did is I took that list, the 300, I closed some sales. I took the money I had from that and I said, all right, I'm going to go buy a zip code. So I bought a small zip code, it was $1,500 here. Um, and I tracked everything that came in. I tracked every lead, every response. And at the time it was an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even have a system for my database yet. And, um, but I built, you know, I just built it up and I built it up and month by month, I was closing more and more. I was at the end of my six month contract receiving a seven time return on my investment. So that yeah. is pretty damn solid. And I think anybody in the world would take that. So then I said, all right, I'm going to go get a second one. And I didn't hire anyone then. I, I went and I bought another one. So I was at $3,000. And I used the profits from that first six months to fund the second six months. And then I kept building from there. And then I went from, you know, from seven to an eight-time return, um, which was my absolute max, by the way, as a single agent. So I was doing really well there. Um, and then we really took off. We were at a $3,000 spend. And I said, I said, dad, Hey, let's, let's turn this thing up. So we went to eight, you know, we went to $8,000 a month, uh, which C 
seems like it seemed like a ton at the time. Now, not even half of what we spend, but yeah. um, but uh, we just kept building and we did it the right way. And we did it by tracking everything that we did. And to this day, um, I track almost everything that I do. So I see a lot of people that just go and throw money at the wall and they don't have success with it or they have a little bit of success, but they don't know how much. Yeah. And at the loss. Um, so I think that that from day one, you know, I had a coach who, who instilled that in me that said, you need to track everything you do in your business. You need to treat this like a business. Yeah. And, um, and I have, like, I'm, I'm kind of a freak with spreadsheets and, uh, you know, you, you just got to know what you're spending. So we, we just kept building and building and building. Definitely. I love it, man. And, and by the way, I, I share your passion for per spreadsheets and, and data. Uh, I did not realize that, um, until later on in the game, but um, it, it, tracking is everything um, because, you know, you don't, if you're making an investment in four different lead sources and you don't know what your return is, um, you know, you could potentially be losing a lot of money by not doubling down or tripling down on a lead source that, that is actually funding your business and one that is draining your business. So I, I definitely see the importance of, uh, of doing that. So what is, what is your, when you talk about like your business today is like a well-oiled machine, right? And so what, tell me like how, how, what are the systems that you have built out? What are some of the different um, vendors that you're using right now to support, um, you know, your, the, the way your business, uh, the inner workings or the intricacies of your business? Well, I appreciate the compliment, by the way. Um, I don't know if, if I can admit to well-oiled. Uh, it seems like a, it's just a, a mess every day to be honest, but, um, uh, yeah, you know, I don't think anybody out there would say we, we've got a super well-oiled machine, but, um, but we're running and we're growing. So yeah. I, you, what do you want to talk about technology? Do you want to talk about, uh, what are, like, what are you guys doing for, for a CRM right now? Um, so we use KV core, we switched over right. from follow up boss because it's given to us through EXP. So. Um, again, taking advantage of what your broker gives you and saving some money there. Mm -hmm. um, but what we really like, just to back it up, what we did, I knew if we were going to bring people in, we had to create some kind of a training uh, regimen, some kind of an accountability system. And, and so that was our commitment from day one was always being available to our agents. If we bring somebody on, you have to be able to educate them, coach them and bring them up. Mm -hmm. And then number two was find a system to hold them accountable. And our system is uh, we run agent on duty or lead shifts. We've been doing that now for two years, um, which is an incredibly powerful uh, system in itself for agent accountability. I, like the last thing that I wanted was to bring on a bunch of agents just to bring people on. Like I want people who are awesome people who appreciate the opportunity and who want to grow their businesses with us and through us. Um, so that, that's, that's key too when you're looking for people to, to hire and to bring on the team. Yep. Now you're speaking my language, brother. So um, the talk, talk to me about like what what the accountability system looks like for the people that you bring in. And by the way, like ho hopefully most people watching this, like you understand that there is a level of accountability in your business because you care for the people that join your team, right? It it most people think they look at accountability as um, as oh man, you know, you micromanage. You hear words like micromanage and stuff like that. When in reality is you know, when you bring people in and you sit down with them and you set a goal, in other words, you say, how much money do you want to make? And you, and you, 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 you build out that roadmap, right? And you reverse engineer it down to, you know, maybe the, the, amount, the number of calls they need to make each day. You're showing them that, hey, I'm going to make an investment. If you make an investment in us, I'm going to make an investment to you in you to help you hit your numbers. So what does your accountability system look like for your agents? Um, yeah. So a very uh, simple way to explain it is we're on duty. So if you want to receive team leads, you are on duty from a specific time period. Uh, for instance, Monday through Friday is in office. Shift one is eight to noon, noon to three, three to six. Those are the three shifts that you can choose. When you're on shift, you come, you're in, in front of a computer, your CRM's up, you've got MLS up, Facebook up, and you're, 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 committing your time in those three hours to lead conversion. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, anything that comes in to the team at that time, that agent gets, you could get 15 leads. You could have 10 Zillow calls. You're in front of a computer. 
We guarantee a 100% response rate. You have all of the resources in front of you where you can just put your notes in, you can set them up on a property search, done. Like that's half the battle if you're running a team and you've got people running all around the place, you're, you're not gonna be able to set it up the way that you need to set it up and things are gonna fall out of place because of that. Yeah. Um, so it, it's also really positive because when you're not on shift, you can go play golf and not worry about your phone ringing. You know, that's a beautiful thing. You can take your kids to a hockey game and not worry about answering a Zillow call or not answering it and have one of the team leaders, you know, get on you about it. So it's a, it's a really good system. But then at the end of the day, we request that everybody logs their statistics as well. So when we started this, it was a Google form. Now we use CTE at the end of the day, seven o'clock. We ask everybody on our team to fill out an accountability form, which shows or it states how many calls they made, how many appointments they set, how many people they talked to. Uh, and a lot of people watching this will, will know what I'm talking about. So, And then every single morning I log in and I look at who logged their accountability. So you can see the consistency with some of the agents who are doing what they're supposed to do. And, and a lot of the times it correlates to more sales and more success too. Yeah. In fact, probably most times, right? We, we were talking yeah. about in our meeting this morning, uh, traditionally the people that embrace our system and, and just, and, 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 and take it for what it is, um, they do the best and it's, it's, no, it's no accident. It's no coincidence. It's just the, the reason why we've set everything up the way we've set it up is for agents to come in and have success immediately. And are you, I guess it sounds like you're maybe finding the same thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, remember too, that it's not just about team leads. It's about building your business. And so if you're not taking an incoming call in those three hours, you're outbound prospecting. So mm -hmm. if you, if you're an agent and you have three shifts, you have nine hours in a week, essentially of prospecting, you're working on your business, which blows the average person out of the water when it comes to time working on your business. Yeah. So are you, is, is that set up like through a sign up sheet or do you, are, is it, are, do you round robin those times or how is that done? Um, no. So to pick shifts after every single team meeting, which is a Tuesday, we have our central team meetings. We open up an app called deputy. It opens up the shifts. Uh, Jackie and our team opens them up for the team. They can log in and pick their shifts. And then we have a second round of picking shifts. So we ask everybody to pick two just to be fair. And, um, you know, I think what we're going to start doing is we're going to start giving preference to the top one or two people as well to pick the shifts that they want to. Um, we don't, we don't, we don't do anything past that as far as grading the agents, but we do right. keep a very close eye on calls made, database management, right. doing what you're supposed to do. Um, I've had agents in the past where, where we didn't do that. And it was probably my fault, but we just weren't there yet. And now they're not on our team because, because of one thing or another. So, yeah. Well, we're no stranger to, to having people come through and leave either. Um, so, and, and, and I, I assume that that probably may never change. Hopefully we get better over time and uh, certainly we're able to uh, mitigate that in some regard, but um, I think it's probably something we're going to have to embrace. So for, for you, you know, that's a good segue into uh, to talking about your, how, you know, the hiring process for you. What, what does that look like for you guys? Are you, are you using sites like Indeed or how are you, how are you attracting talent? Great question. And it's something that I'm uh, extremely focused on right now. And so, but it's like every other system that we have, it didn't start off being, you know, well run. It started off with who can I look at on, you know, in my area, I went on the MLS, I found their phone numbers. We would call people. If we had transactions with people, we would approach them. Um, but we never had an automation and we never had a really a, a strategy behind it. Mm -hmm. So if you fast forward to today, um, we now have the pillars set up to really build this thing out. And it starts with consistent recruiting. It's just like running your real estate business. If you stop recruiting or you stop prospecting, you're going to stop growing. And that's become very apparent, apparent to me in the last year or two, a year, maybe year and a half, um, because you could lose three people. And, you know, if you're a small enough team that could crush you. Yeah. So so now we use a part, a, a company called Third Pool. We've been with them for a little while. Third Pool? They, yep, thirdpool.com. My coach recommended them. Um, and also one of my one of my mentors, Lisa Chinati out in Boston, uses them too. And she just is absolutely out of this world crushing it. You need to talk to her too. But What's um, her name? Lisa Chinati. 
I can, send, I can, yeah, yeah, she's awesome. Um, all right. So, I'm, so right, I'm writing all this down. Brother. You're, you're dropping, you're dropping some, some golden nuggets, man. Yeah. Um, so, first, before we could bring anybody on, we had to have coaching, we had to have education, and we had to be available, right? And we got to the point where five, six, seven agents on our team, um, that's about the max, you know, and, and I was the one that was really spending a lot of time, and I still love spending time with them. But um, the first hire we made after that was a sales manager. And then we brought in three more agents. So now we have a sales manager in between me and the agents, which really has helped things. And we're working on that too, um, that position and building that position out. So the next thing was onboarding because you can't bring somebody onto your team without an onboarding type process. And our poor uh, staff, Jackie and, and Liz, uh, they basically before this had to just walk somebody through a paper checklist and say, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Now you're going to script with Parker. Now you're going to do this. And so now we've really built that out um, electronically. So now I have an onboarding guide that a new agent can come into the system. They can go through that process. Our sales manager can work with them through that process. And that's basically week one. Week two is going to be focused or is focused completely on skill set and getting them into production as quickly as we can. Because that, that is my goal is to get them into transactions as fast as, as we can. Okay. All right. Um, so what is the, what is your structure <clears throat> look like right now? It's obviously you and your dad, you've got a transaction manager. Who else? <clears throat> yeah. Just, just kind of from the top. Um, Liz is our operations manager. She is, uh, also a licensed real estate lawyer or she's a, she's a licensed lawyer. Um, a recovering lawyer, she would tell you, but um, yeah, the, the next uh, would be Jackie. Um, she's she's been my assistant now for over a year. Um, then we have a transaction coordinator. Um, we have a social uh, social media strategist or basically contractor taking all, all that stuff off our plate. Aaron is our sales manager, and um, and then I use Upwork aggressively for yeah. uh, like VA support and contract type work. Love it, man. Love it. So you guys obviously are, are you have um, really big ambitions and, um, you know, obviously you're, you, you've scaled really quickly. Um, when you, when you talk about the, obviously having your dad as a resource um, and then, you know, tapping into coaching, do you feel like when you when you get an outside perspective like a coach that um, somebody that looks at it at your business objectively um, that that they can really kind of see where your weaknesses are and then maybe help you hone in those and then improve those maybe much quicker than you know if you tried to do that on your own oh 100 percent yeah and I'm, I'm so glad that I took that leap um, I mean, think about that. How many new agents do you know that three months in hire a $2,500 a month coach? Like that was, that was my income goal. Like, but it turned out to be the most important thing. And I think it was because, um, growing up, I've always been very coachable, like with sports, I wasn't going to argue with a hockey coach over, uh, you know, some of the plays that we ran. We just ran the plays. Like we each have our specific jobs. And then in golf, I wasn't going to argue with my golf coach at, you know, at New Mexico over a uh, you know, swing tip or, what kind of clubs we're playing. Like it just didn't make sense. So the same applied to real estate and you tell me to do something, I'll, I'll do it. You know, I'll follow up. Do you feel like that, um, that maybe knowing that, that you um, maybe when you look for talent that you're looking for a specific background, like maybe a military background or an athletic background or um, you know, some sort of some some sort of a structure in the background that those may, people may perform a little bit better, and, and that you may be more uh, more attracted to to hiring those types of people. A hundred percent. Yep. One of my um, one of my f good friends, he's in our our network, our EXP network up here, is a former baseball player, and he only hires athletes. So he played for the Twins, and he's got a good in with a lot of people, but um, he's got his team just there's a bunch of just hungry animals that are just out there crushing it. And yeah, like I, I, of course I look for that. I look for energy. I look for coachability. I look for people who could be held accountable. Um, Cause in this business, you can, you, I mean, if, if you have the right fit, like you don't have to have a college degree to sell real estate. You don't have to have anything. Like you can wake up 90 hours, get your license 
And if you can fit the mold of what we're looking for, we can pretty much make you successful if you're yeah. willing to do the things it takes. So it's interesting to think about. I mean, yeah, like I would love to have a team full of, you know, college, college athletes, but um, it just doesn't always work that way. Sure. So guy like you, man, obviously you're setting the world on fire, man. And, and um, you know, you, you one of the top agents at all of Cobalt Banker and, you know, you hear about this tiny company that's up and coming. Uh, and, you know, you, 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 you hear about it and you have what reaction? Talk about, talk about the, your, the first, when you first heard about eXp, what reaction you had? Um, well, I, one of my mentors switched over to him. And so that caught my attention pretty quick. Um, but being in the Midwest, a lot of things, and, and you can relate to this, a lot of things get to us later. Yeah. You know, you, you don't hear, you don't hear a lot of the trends, even the music, like the clothing styles, like everything moves to the Midwest a little bit slower. And luckily I'm tapped in nationally. So, um, I was able to get a, a really uh, good view of what EXP was all about. And when I compared it to what we were experiencing, um, there, there was just no comparison there for us. You know, we're a growing team. Um, I would argue that it's very difficult for any traditional broker to, to offer a growing team a lot of support or the, or the support that they need. I mean, it, it's hard because everything is internal. It's not their fault. Um, the team leader is basically providing everything else. So yeah. I saw EXP. I saw the potential in Minnesota. Um, we were, I think the first team to actually move over. There are a few teams over here or a few uh, agents over here already, but I saw the potential and, um, luckily I have a partner who, um, is willing to take risks with me and, and we did it. And now looking back, uh, awesome. It's great. Yeah. So you, you guys have been over how long now? We moved over December 1st. Okay. And I would assume that, you know, when you made that decision, you obviously sought out the advice of your team members. Um, how did you approach your team with this decision? Well, we have an amazing team, by the way. I hope that I've conveyed that properly. Um, we have four people on our team that will sell 10 million or more. And in the Midwest, that's, that's freaking awesome. Huge. And so we respect them for how hard they work. And what I, what, what we were, we were told, my coach told us to do this. He said, pull your top four or five people into a room together and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one. like talk to them level, right? Don't bring the whole group in at the same time. Like talk to them, explain the, you know, the reasons for moving, how it's going to impact them, ask them for their advice, try to poke holes in the thing, right? And if you can get your core team on board and, and show how it's going to benefit them, you're going to have a much better chance of, um, of getting your whole team over. And, um, and so we met with them first. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right. Let me know if that cuts out because one of mine just went down. Okay, um, yeah, so we laid it all out for these guys. And we just said, we, you know, we don't want you to be unhappy. Like, we want you to fully support this. So please take a look. We're going to show exactly how it works. And then once we had them on board, we went to our, um, our newer agents. And, you know, we proposed it to them. So it worked out very well. Love it. Yeah. I, I always think it's critical to get to get buy in, um, you know, because, you know, most of, of your success at this point is coming through those folks who have committed to working with you and, and you understand and appreciate that. So, you know, kudos for you. Um, so we've talked about the past. We've talked about the present. What does the future look like for you, brother? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I mean, we've had our bumps, we've had our challenges and we, you know, you learn from it. I hope that the future is filled with growth and success. Um, I would, I would like to see all of the members of our team do extremely well. Um, you know, doing things for their families that they couldn't do before, buying rental properties, going on great trips with, their, you know, as a team leader, like it's kind of cliche to say this, but like, I would just love to see them do really well. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. We have, we use Slack with our team and, and uh, just seeing the little celebrations in there when someone sells a house or someone does something cool, like that is so much better than any individual accomplishment. So let's, let's keep doing that, of course, but I have a pursuit of being number one and I definitely want to be number one. Um, however you want to define that, um, you know, it starts with the, with, with our clients first. Um, I never let any of that slip away. 
But then after that, you know, of course you want to grow the team. Of course you want to grow your presence. Um, yeah, we have, we have some pretty big goals. Well, brother, I have no doubt that you will get there. Um, you're, you're, you're doing some amazing things. Uh, you've built an amazing business and you continue to do so. Hey man, if, if people want to connect with you, um, on, you know, you know, maybe they have questions about how to scale a real estate team or, uh, just general questions about, you know, how to, um, you know, what, what tools, systems and resources you're using. Um, how can people connect with you? Yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, the best is probably Facebook. So add me on Facebook. Um, the other thing is, is that I run a group called Real Estate Rainmakers uh, with my partner, Julie, and would definitely like the support in there. We like to share, collaborate, um, hear from everybody. And so that's a group that everybody should join too. Um, other than that, send me a message. We'll connect. I mean, I'm an open book. That's how I learned. And I, I, I'll give any, anything back that I possibly can. Awesome. Parker, man, thank you so much for taking uh, a few minutes out of your afternoon to drop some value on our audience. And uh, certainly hope to see you in Orlando in a couple months and, uh, and connect again. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it, man. And we'll talk soon. All right, brother. See ya. All right. See ya.